Well, the polling is out, and they're basically even, 49 to, to 51 percent. Um, so a lot of people having a lot of opinions, but it is very interesting to note that, that people felt good about what they saw because it was civil. A focus group of undecided voters overwhelmingly said that Vance won the recent debate between J.D. Vance and Tim Waltz, and we're going to break down exactly why. over the issues in a post-debate focus group, an overwhelming majority said they thought that Vance won last night. Here's why. He's very battle-tested, very ready, and you can just see that he went to Yale, and he's very intelligent, and he reassured a lot of people, I think. Somebody else. He was in strong control of the facts. He ran the show. He remains, he remains steady during the whole performance, and I was very impressed with him being very sincere and authentic. He humanized, he humanized himself and actually looked like a regular guy. Joining us now, pollster and communications strategist Frank Luntz. Those were people that you had polled or were talking to. And I, I found the last comment really interesting because as he humanized himself, indicating how badly he has looked in front of some people with some of the comments he's made, what did you make uh, of how Vance did? And then we will get to Walls. And I've got to say, I totally see why he was composed, thoughtful, and hit on the issues that really matter to everyday Americans. I was at work last night in a place that the union supports Kamala Harris. Majority of the people there were saying they did not like the Tim Waltz debate performance. They felt he danced around the questions while Vance had reassuring answers. Harris and Waltz can't have the mainstream media hide their incompetence forever. Number one, they loved both candidates. In fact, if they could, they would have reversed the tickets and put Vance and Waltz on top and the other two on the bottom. Number two is it gave them faith in democracy, the idea that people could sit down, disagree, and do so civilly. But in terms of Vance, they were shocked that the Vance that they've seen up to this point was not the J.D. Vance of last night, measured, thoughtful, emotional, willing to agree with his opponents, not divisive. The language that they used to describe him tells me that he has been misused on the campaign so far, that he would be far better communicating Donald Trump's agenda and vision and purpose than the attack dog kind of um, uh, strategy that they've been using up to now. I have to tell you, only twice in my career have I had such an overwhelming movement towards one candidate? That's how significant yesterday was. Not that they were critical about Governor Waltz, but they were so shocked at how emotive Senator Vance was. Right. Uh, and because he was coming from this place of being very unpopular when it comes to his personality and the things that he said. Um, so that's an interesting twist. The mainstream media constantly paints Republicans are crazy and a threat to democracy. They've done it to Trump for years. And at this point, he is tired of the nonsense. When they see Yal White and they come at him incorrect, Trump puts them in their place. Hence, Trump gets labeled as mean. Vance still has that vigor and won't let the media bait him. When Americans hear Trump and Vance speak, that's how they win over independent voters. What about Walls? What did you hear from uh, the panel uh, on on how Walls did and what they thought of his uh, of his comments and his policies? Now he got better as the debate went on. They thought that his first thirty minutes that he was stumbling, that he struggled, as I am speaking to you right now, and they felt that he wasn't really as engaged and he was much more defensive. His best moment of the night was in challenging Senator Vance on what happened in the events of January 6th, and most specifically, whether or not Trump won or lost the 2020 election. That said, he did not connect as well because he was much less specific, and they were particularly critical that he was not answering the questions the moderators were posing. And in a vice presidential debate, they expect more from the candidates than to try to duck the questions. This is the Democrat cheat code. They are always bring up January 6th. The American people are tired of hearing about that. And that orange man is bad. Focus on policy that will make America great again. Megan, you called this a pre-Trump era debate. Walls looked nervous. 
especially off the top. Everyone saw that. The way Jen Psaki described it, her take was, she, the way she put it is, missing the magic and the organic spontaneity of Tim Walls. What did you see last night? Yeah, I, I think he was absolutely nervous. I mean, I, I would also be very nervous on that stage as well. And then he got into his groove, and I think he did very well. I think the, the highlights for him were obviously the, uh, the issues on reproductive rights. I think he was very strong there. I think he pushed back really appropriately on immigration and some other top areas. Um, I do think that the, that his shining moment and where the dials were really high, um, according to a lot of the polls, were the last question about if he can you know, say that Donald Trump lost the election. And I think that the independent voters in these swing states, that's what people are noticing. Do they really want someone who can't say that their boss lost the election as the last person in the room when they're making these crucial decisions uh, you know, during a wartime and during some of these other crises that you face as the president and the vice president? So I think that that was a really telling moment for Walls. And I think, you know, both of them did no harm. And I think that, you know, we will all move on to, to, to the next major news event um, in the cycle. This is why debates matter, folks. J.D. Vance showed up and gave voters a reason to believe in him. He didn't come across as some out of touch politician or an attack dog like we've seen in some of his previous appearances. Instead, he was measured, thoughtful and authentic. Voters want someone they can trust, and last night, Vance proved he's someone who can connect with the American people. And let's be honest, having Yale on your resume doesn't hurt either. He's smart, he's capable, and it showed. And here's a pivotal moment. Waltz tried to corner Vance on January 6th, expecting to rattle him by bringing up Trump and the 2020 election. But what happened? Vance didn't take the bait. Instead of getting defensive, Vance stayed calm and gave a measured response, focusing on the future instead of rehashing the past dot. This was a critical point in the debate. Waltz wanted to make Vance look like he's stuck in the Trump camp without offering real solutions. But Vance handled it perfectly. He didn't get caught up in the drama of January 6th or try to relitigate the 2020 election. Instead, he pivoted to talk about what really matters, solving today's problems. It was a masterclass in how to keep your cool under pressure, and the focus group clearly noticed. That's leadership. Lee, some people saw J.D. Vance last night as kind of working to soften some of the sharp edges that are Donald Trump and Trump's message to voters. The Democratic governor of Colorado, who's a surrogate for the Harris campaign, was on with John this morning. And I want to play for you what he said to that idea. If you're, if you're looking for a car salesman, he's your guy. I mean, I think he looked at Shifty, he looked at Slick. Of course, he's good at what he does. He talks to different groups in different ways, no question about it. But at the end of the day, he failed to say he would side with the American people over Donald Trump. So I saw that Democrats really didn't believe uh, J.D. Vance. They said he seemed nice, very, very much in line with what we just heard from the governor here. But I think that independent voters and Republicans were refreshed to see a softer side of J.D. Vance. They were, actually, many people said that they really didn't know what to expect. They listened to him and they said, I appreciate that they can disagree without demonizing. He talked about a lot of issues in ways that resonated. He got away uh, from the abortion debate unscathed, which I think is a big deal because this is the biggest weak spot for Republicans. And so I think overall, J.D. Vance came away with more fans than he went in with. Is it going to change votes? Absolutely not. There was not one voter that I talked to last night that ended up changing their mind, but people had a more favorable impression of J.D. Vance than they expected to. Frank Luntz, one of the top pollsters in the country, even weighed in on this. He said that the shift in favor of Vance was one of the most significant he's seen in his career. Think about that for a second. This wasn't just a slight nudge in favor of Vance. It was an overwhelming movement. People are starting to see Vance as the real deal dot. When someone like Frank Luntz says something like that, you know it's a big deal. Vance went from being perceived as too harsh or divisive to showing that he's actually a unifier. He's someone who can bring people together without sacrificing his principles. Luntz is right. This was a major turning point for Vance's campaign. He wasn't just good, he was great. Now let's talk about Tim Waltz. Unfortunately for him, he just couldn't keep up. The focus group said he looked nervous at the beginning of the debate and never really found his footing. He did 
did have a decent moment when he tried to pin Vance down on January 6th, but even that didn't land the way he hoped. The rest of the time, he seemed defensive and unsure of himself. This was the difference between a candidate who's prepared and one who's scrambling. Waltz seemed rattled from the get-go, and it showed. Um, while Vance was calm, collected, and direct, Waltz spent too much time dodging questions and playing defense. The voters saw right through it. At a time when Americans are looking for strong leadership, Waltz just didn't deliver. One statement from J.D. Vance that stuck out had something to do with uh, abortion, reproductive rights, what he said. He was asked about the campaign's stance on abortion rights, and Vance said this. As a Republican who proudly wants to protect innocent life in this country, who proudly wants to protect the vulnerable, is that my party, we've got to do so much better of a job at earning the American people's trust back on this issue where they frankly just don't trust us. Vance was asked about the campaign's stance on abortion rights, and his response was very telling. He said, as a Republican who proudly wants to protect innocent life, the GOP has to earn back the American people's trust on this issue. Vance acknowledged that people don't trust the GOP right now on reproductive rights, and he was very honest about it. Now, this was smart. Vance knows that the abortion issue is tricky for Republicans, especially after Roe versus Wade was overturned. But instead of avoiding the topic, he addressed it head on. He admitted that the GOP hasn't done a good enough job of explaining their position and supporting women. That's a level of honesty we don't usually see from politicians. Whether you agree with his stance or not, you've got to respect that he was willing to say, we need to do better. That kind of accountability is refreshing and it clearly resonated with voters. So there you have it, folks. J.D. Vance didn't just survive this debate, he thrived. He came in with a message that was clear, focused, and relatable. He connected with voters on immigration, crime, and even the sensitive issue of reproductive rights. Meanwhile, Tim Waltz looked defensive and out of his depth. The focus group made it clear Vance won this debate hands down and he might just be the leader people have been waiting for. Let me know in the comments if you agree. Was JD Vance the clear winner or did Waltz have any redeeming moments? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future updates. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.